Hello students, we are going to look at two of the structures from your stereochemistry tutorial where the RS configurations uh, were wrongly assigned. Not all were wrongly assigned, but um, there were just uh, one or two centers uh, which I guess you are not able to visualize where the H is being projected out. Yeah, so um, yeah, I've illustrated them here, but maybe before that I can use a chem draw um to to draw out the structure so that i can paste it over to chem 3d so you have a better view of where the h is pointing okay so um i'm just going to translate the structures over here I'm going to use the templates for a bicyclic system i can easily draw that but uh it's easier to use the templates okay then um there is a methyl group um, pointing in this direction and then two methyl groups like this and then of course um, a ketone okay so I'm just going to draw in the ketone okay and the O is over here yeah some of you misunderstood that the H is projecting inwards if you try to project your H inwards you realize that the structure will be very strained yeah, so the H is actually projecting towards you and not away from you. Okay, so the H is actually like this. Yeah, um, even if I don't draw the H, um, you can see from the three-dimensional structures that uh, it will be projecting out towards you. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paste this structure over to Cam 3 d over here, and then I'm going to do an optimization to minimize the energy for you to take a look at the structure. So you have you have a better view. Okay, so I'm just going to do some rotation um, so that you can get a better view. Okay, now I think um, that's about it. Okay, so you can see that uh, this is the ketone. Okay, so I'm just going to minim minimize this. Okay, so I'm going to put them um, side by side. Okay, yeah. You can see that this is actually the ketone. Okay, so the ketone is over here, which is CO. And then um, you can see that this methyl group is projecting away from you. So this is the methyl group projecting away from you. And this is a bridging carbon. So the bridging carbon is over here. You can see that it is also tetrahedral in geometry. So um, so one is projecting to the left, the other one is projecting to the right. So if I rotate a little bit, okay, maybe I make it a bit bigger so you can see. Yeah. So and then this is these two are the bridge head. Okay, these two are the bridge head. And then you, you realize that the H is actually projecting towards you uh, and not away from you. And this actually makes the structure stable. You can see that uh, this particular carbon here, which is also the chiral center, is tetrahedral in geometry. Okay, you can see that the four groups are pointing towards the four corners of a cube. Okay, what about the other bridge head containing the methyl group? You can also see that it is also tetrahedral in geometry. It's over here. So this two groups are projecting towards you and these two groups are away from you okay this is what uh it needs uh to have in order for the structure to be stable it um where when you try to optimize a structure or like what i did earlier on um we are trying to ensure that the structure is at its minimal energy uh as much as uh possible so that most of the groups um, are at their optimal position so as to minimize electronic repulsion. Yeah. So in this sense, uh, every carbon will do the best of uh, its ability. La. I mean, for a not very strange structure, it, uh, they will try to attain a tetrahedral geometry. So in this sense, you can tell that um, every carbon here, even the bridge head carbons, which I kept emphasizing because the bridge head carbons are the one which give rise to the configuration. Okay, so yeah. So maybe because of this, uh, some of you might misinterpret the position of the H and then um, uh, think that uh, it is pointing inwards. Okay, so if I go back to the to this, right? So you realize that the H is projecting towards you. So the H is here. Okay, then um, in that case, how are we going to assign the configuration? So maybe um, we'll just try this once and we see how it goes okay so um so this is the chiral center in question i don't think i need to assign this because uh most of you are able to tell me that this is s configuration so i will try to assign um the one which is a little bit more problematic okay so you notice that uh the other uh three centers right uh i'm going to highlight in yellow okay so this center this and this right they are all carbon 
Okay, so in terms of priority, uh, each of the carbon dash should either take on the first, second, or third priority. So in this case, the H will be of the lowest priority. Then what about the remaining um uh three group? How do we assign them? Yeah, so for this particular carbon, uh you notice that it is bonded to three other carbons. Okay, so namely this, this, and this. Yeah, so uh that carbon will be C, C, and C. Okay, for the other two carbon, it will be C, H, H, and C, H, H. Yeah, because um each of the carbon is bonded to a carbon and a, and two H's. So in that case, uh the one with the first priority will be the bridging carbon. Uh, the reason is uh remember from our CIP rule, right? We we will try to uh move along we will try to as align all the atoms according to their atomic number and then we'll move along until there is a difference. So in this case, the first atom, no difference. So we'll move on and then the second atom, there's a difference. So we'll assign uh, the bridging carbon uh, as having the first priority. Okay, and then for the other two, we cannot differentiate them. So in this case, we'll just cancel them and then we'll just move them along. Then the next carbon here, we will be able to differentiate them because uh, this carbon is bonded to oxygen and, and oxygen obviously has a larger atomic number as compared to a carbon. Okay, so in that case, uh, this will have a second priority and then the third priority. Okay, and then since we are looking at it where the lowest priority group is um, coming out towards us, we will look at it uh, in this direction as, N, as clockwise, but we cannot call it an R configuration because the hitch is projecting towards us. So we need to imagine that our eyes is behind. So whatever that is clockwise when we view in front, right? When we view behind, it will be NP clockwise. So therefore, this configuration is S configuration. Okay, so this is a shortcut which you can take, lah. Okay, so uh, I mean, I'm okay. So maybe I can just um make it a bit easier. So let's say we have a uh, a groups here like this. So this is priority one, priority two, priority three. If we have a group that is projecting out towards us, which is the lowest priority, we can just assign it normally. So when we look at it normally, it will be clockwise. We normally will have coin R, but remember that assigning priority is such that the lowest priority group must be away from us. So we need to imagine that we put our eyes behind the screen, which is a bit difficult. But whatever um, that is behind the screen, right, it will be opposite to what we will envision if we look at it in front of the screen. So whatever that is clockwise, when you put behind, it will be anti-clockwise. So we'll call it S. Okay, but if we have um, the priority 1, 2, 3, and then the group is pointing away, then we don't need to reassign because the H is already away from us or the lowest priority group is away, already away from us. So in this case, we'll just name it as R. Okay, so it's as simple as that. So I hope... Uh, this is straightforward enough for most of you. Okay, so the next thing we are going to look at is uh, this particular uh, uh, structure which uh, contains a few fused ring. Okay, so again, we'll try to draw it. It's a bit messy. So uh, I, I hope that if I were to use Cam 3D, it will be clearer to most of you. Okay, so I'm just going to delete this and uh, attempt to draw the structure. So I'm going to draw it uh, real quick uh, because I don't want to spend too much time uh, drawing. Okay, so uh, this group is going to project out and then um, like this and then uh, there's one group here um, and then the rest of the groups uh, we have a group projecting outwards which is the OH. I'm going to label it later. Okay, and then of course a H projecting out. We can label it as well and then another H. Okay, so and then after this group projects up and then another group projects up and then uh, we're going to draw in the bridge head like this. Okay, so my apologies if it doesn't look very aesthetically uh, pleasing. Yeah, just trying to draw it as uh, fast as I could so as to uh, minimize time wastage. If you want, you can just skip to the parts. Yeah, it's not very uh, easy to draw under time constraints. Okay, so this OCH3, okay, yep. 
Yeah, so more or less, I think um, we got the structures correct. We can double check. Okay, so maybe I can shift this a little bit. Yeah, so that it looks uh, a little bit more correct. Okay. Yeah, maybe like this. Okay, and then I'll just shift this down a bit. Okay, now, the first thing when you recognize, when you look at this structure, right, is that this structure is definitely not flat. Okay, that's the number one thing uh, I, I, I hope you can try to use your imagination uh, to visualize. Why is it definitely not flat? Because number one is we have this whole bridge group uh, projecting out towards us. So the two uh, few six member ring behind, right, it must be puckered downwards. What do you mean by puckered downwards? So it's like a, it's like you're trying to fold a piece of paper uh, downwards into a U, into an inverted U shape. Okay, so if you don't believe, again, um, <coughs> most of our students might not believe. If you don't believe, let us try to uh, uh, visualize it in Cam 3D. Okay, so I'm going to paste this over to Cam 3D. Uh, again, uh, let me enlarge this. I'm just going to erase this structure. I'm going to paste over. I'm going to minimize it. Okay, yeah. So after I minimize it, right, um, I will try to uh, showcase the structure in... in in its most favorable light. Uh, okay, let's see. Huh? Yeah, okay. Um, I'm okay. The structure is a little bit messy, so I will try to, to the best of my ability, to uh, make sure that it's uh, clear enough to you. Lah. Okay, now you notice that this is the benzene ring or the phenol ring. Okay, and obviously the phenol ring is flat. Lah. Can you see that it's a bit puckered? And as I said, it's like a paper folding downwards into an inverted U shape. Yeah, so uh, this is the secondary amine represented uh, in blue over here. And this is the bridging uh, carbon. So it's a CH2, a CH2. So this is the, okay, so this is a CH2 and a CH2. And then uh, it goes all the way down to this uh, carbon here, which is a quaternary carbon. And then you realize that how come the shape, the, the shape uh, looks so weird? Okay, whenever we try to represent a structure flat on a piece of paper, right? Uh, what we are trying to do is just to force this structure flat. But you know that it is impossible for this structure to be flat, especially the ring at the back. Yeah, so we will try to use the projection to force our mind to imagine what it will be like uh, if it's going to project out towards the, towards the screen or out of the screen. And then this portion, you should be able to imagine that you will, will fall downwards. Lah. But most of us do not have this uh, vivid imagination because uh, it is difficult. I mean, it's not an easy task. So, um, yeah. So in most cases, uh, do not be worried about that. You, you need to be able to imagine, um, so much detail. Lah. But I think what you probably want to be aware of is when you're asked to indicate the relevant chiral center, at least you need to know whether the groups are projecting in the correct or wrong direction. Lah. Okay. So at least this O, right? This ether, this five member ether ring, right? The H is projecting towards us. You can see that this H is projecting towards you. Okay, and then the O ether, the, the oxygen is actually projecting sort of downwards. Okay, so that's fine. And then, um, and this H obviously is projecting out towards us, right? So this is the H projecting out towards us. And then the other group is go, it goes inwards. And then the other H goes, uh, inside. And then the N, and then this two bridge is out. Okay, so everything is perfect. Yeah, yeah. So, um, most of you, uh, if I don't remember wrongly, actually get this particular quaternary chiral center, uh, wrong, wrongly assigned. So this is the center that is wrongly assigned because you probably are not able to imagine how the rest of the groups are being projected. So that may explain, uh, why that particular center is assigned wrongly. Yeah. Okay, so I will not, <clears throat> I will not bore you with the details of assigning, uh, the rest of the four chiral centers. I will just be assigning this, uh, okay, so I'm going to just label this as yellow. Uh. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to assign this quaternary chiral center to you. Okay, but, uh, I need you to maybe bear in mind that, um, this particular chiral center, it has the three carbon base group that is, uh, pointing downwards, sort of downwards, like, uh, trigonal pyramidal uh, geometry and then this CH2 group is pointing outwards. Okay, I think you need to have this um, basic sense first because if you don't have that, then uh, later on it's uh, a little bit difficult to uh, explain. Okay, then uh, so uh, I hope you are clear 
now uh, I I don't know if the if the model make it more confusing or less confusing, but at least now you should be able to try to imagine uh, how this whole structure will look like. Okay, so with that, then um, I will move back to the um, um, this particular uh, piece of uh, PDF file where I can actually annotate. Yeah, so we are we are actually looking at uh, assigning this particular chiral center, which um, most of you actually got it wrong. Okay, so <clears throat> first of all. We'll look at all the, <clears throat> all the atoms that's bonded to it. You realize that it's not very inspiring because they are all carbon based. So this one, two, three, four. So they are all carbon based. So <clears throat> because they are all carbon based, right? Um, we need to move on to the next layer in order to, um, to decide, uh, uh, their particular, uh, priority or, or rather their par priority. So how do we do that? Okay, so um, we'll try to do that one by one. Uh, maybe we start from the bridge, the bridging carbon first. Okay, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll just use the little bit of space um, to my right to annotate. So I will go in, I will just go in an anti-clockwise uh, fashion. Okay, so I hope you can follow me. Okay, so first of all, <clears throat> um, this particular carbon is bonded to two H's and a carbon. So I will just put it as uh, C. Okay, sorry, yeah. Uh. This 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 stylus is not really working. Okay, oops, sorry. I'm using the wrong one again. Okay, okay, here. Right. Okay, so I I'm going to put it as C H H. Okay. Then um the next one is bonded to C C and H. Okay, so that will be C uh C and H. Okay. Then the next carbon is bonded to O. Okay, so O has the largest priority. I think you can see already. And then uh, C and H. And then, of course, the next one over here, you can see, is bonded to C, uh, C and C. Okay, because double bond, you need to expand out, remember? Yeah, so all Cs. I, then I think from here is quite clear cut that uh, this will take on priority one. So this carbon will have priority one. Um, this carbon will have priority two. Okay, priority two. And then, um, because the other one is CCH, right? Then this will have priority three. And then the finally the one priority four. Okay. Then I think now the answer is obvious because we have one, two, three, four, right? Okay. So again, um, we are looking at the same idea now. Yeah. So, um, the lowest priority group is projecting towards us. Okay, but we always make our life easier by looking at it as though uh, it's projecting away from us. Lah. So now we are looking at one, two, and three. So it's clockwise. Yeah, however, we need to bear in mind that because it's projecting out towards us, we need to look from the back. So we need to view from uh, behind the screen. So when we, view, when we view behind the screen, it will become anti-clockwise. So therefore, its configuration is assigned S. Okay, so uh, I hope you find uh, this little video um, fruitful for you to understand number one, how to assign configuration and then number two, uh, how to visualize uh, complex uh, structures to the best of your ability, of course. And um, of course, the use of Cam 3D uh, definitely will help you a lot in uh, visualization. Okay, so uh, with that, I thank you for your time. So we'll see you in the next video.